Thanks everyone for joining me. My name is Megan Fay, and today we are going to talk about RIT dye. So we are not gonna be talking about RIT dye in terms of fabric. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using RIT dye in order to create some different dyes for wood. So this is a great example. Um, I've been kind of into painting these birdhouses, but one problem I came up with with the birdhouse is to get a paintbrush into all these creeks and corners and even inside when it doesn't actually open can be really tough to get all of that covered in one solid color before I start decorating it. So one of the things I discovered was that if you actually dye the wood in something like writ dye, then you have this base to start with. And once you have this base, then you can continue to embellish it. So with this one, I used some Posca markers and I added some bling to the roof of my little birdhouse. So with that dye as a base, you can really make some very cool things. So once I went through my birdhouses, then I was like, what else can I dye? And I started finding all sorts of things to dye. So at Michael's right now, we're shifting in between uh, spring and summer. So there's some new wooden shapes that are unfinished wood. And some of the cute ones that are available right now are little wooden mushrooms. So these little wooden mushrooms I put into the dye. I had a red dye and a green dye. And then once I had those dyes, I went ahead and added some extra paint and some varnish to it. And you have these adorable little wooden pieces. And then I thought, well, what else can I dye? <laughs> so then I found this plant stool. So this plant stool is adorable. It's available right now in the summer collection at Michael's. It has this great flower leaf or this plant leaf. There's also butterflies. I think there's a mushroom. There's a couple of different options of these plant stands. And I went ahead and dyed this plant stand, the wood, in some green dye. And then you can tell that I went back over it with some extra Posca markers or even just acrylic paint in order to give it some extra touches. And then you can put a sealant on it. The plants can be on it. It can be waterproof with that sealant and none of the dye will come back off. And one more piece that I'm looking at is there are some really cool wooden pieces that are mobiles. I think that's how you say it, Mo mobile. <laughs> I've never said that out loud. But they have um, some unfinished wood pieces that spin in the wind. And so these are fun and they could be fun with paint, but they could also be really fun with the sky. So there are some of these arches. There are also some ones that are more circular and it has this cool um, stone at the bottom to kind of refract some rainbows for you too. So these are all things that you can put into the die. I've also put things like these wooden beads. Um, you can put the wooden beads into the die and they take the die really, really well. So we together in class today are gonna do a little bit of dyeing and it'll wait in the dye bath for about 10 minutes and then we can pull it up. But because it will be wet and I won't be able to paint over top of it, I also have some projects that are kind of in the middle of everything. So this is already dry and dyed and then I'll show you how you can add some of those embellishments afterwards. So we have a lot going on. I'm in my kitchen today because I have hot water on my stove and I pulled it all the way up to boil and now have kind of letting it be cool a little bit more down. But anything around 140 degrees is going to be best for your writ dye. And usually the ratio with your writ dye um, when you're doing wood, it depends on how dark you want your color to be. So if you want to add more dye than what I'm recommending, that's going to give you a darker color or less dye is going to give you a more diluted color or a lighter color. But basically that's a recipe that they suggest on the writ dye website is that for every half cup of dye, you can use two quarts of water. So I have this hot water on my stove. I'm gonna pour some hot water into some pans and then we're gonna soak these and let them soak for about 10 minutes while we're doing some other painting. And we're just gonna have some different reveals as we go throughout the class too. So those of you who are joining me live, thanks for coming. We're gonna see what kind of magic we can do together. If you have any questions, let me know in the chat and I'll be happy to try and answer as many of those questions as I can. Because it's dye, you gotta wear gloves. The writ dye will be very difficult, not impossible, but very difficult to get off your hands. 
So make sure that you're using some good heavy duty gloves or kitchen gloves. And I'm also going to be dealing with hot water. So there's safety issues. And something nice about the RIT dye is that because it is water-based, according to their website also, it's safe to be flushed. It's safe in septic and in sewer systems. So once you're done with the dye, I'm gonna be working in my kitchen sink. And once I'm done, I can literally just pour it down the kitchen sink and it shouldn't do any damage to the system. So I have, switching over to the other camera, I have set up here in my kitchen sink, I have some of these roasting pans, which are always kind of nice. And then I also have um, like a little uh, tin that I got from something. And so I'm gonna use a couple of different baths and I'm gonna try a couple of different colors. And I'm gonna put this on my screen a little bit bigger. There we go. So I have lots of choices. One of the choices I want to work with today is gonna be another one of these kind of like hanging pieces. I had so much fun with the eclipse in here in Dallas where I am, we had the totality with the eclipse on Monday and it was absolutely spectacular. So I'm really into that right now. And I think I'm gonna dye this like an indigo color. I'm gonna dye this birdhouse. And why I have this bath is because this bath is higher and smaller. So the about the same amount of dye it would take to fill the bottom of one of these pans to do some larger pieces, that same amount of dye could fill this up because of the volume of this one. So I'm gonna be doing the birdhouse dunked in this particular pan. I have some of these blank wooden mushrooms that I can also work with. And I have lots of other things. So part of the spring collection were these really beautiful butterflies that are wicker. So this dye technique I'm going to show you works really well with wicker. We also have a lot of really cool wooden tags. And all of these wooden tags do really well with the dye. And they just are sharp. They look really sharp. So if you have these and you want to take them and place them on a different wooden piece, or if you want to add them on top of any creation that you already have, it's kind of a little extra pop. These are a great extra pop of color and they take that RIT dye really, really well. So I'm gonna get started with our first pan and that's the one that I'm gonna do this celestial hanging on. So I'm gonna be taking the water that's currently on my stove and I'm gonna pour some of that water into this roasting pan over here. So here we go. And I'm going to kind of fill the bottom of the roasting pan and see how that does for me. And then, like I said, the ratio of dye is about a half cup of the RIT dye for every two quarts of water for wood. But again, depending on if you want it darker or lighter, you can kind of change that ratio up a bit. So I'm not going to use a measuring cup. I'm actually going to just pour but I'm gonna try and pour about a half of a cup. And then I'm gonna take something, you can use lots of different things to stir with. You can use um, just a disposable spoon. You can use something metal because this water is hot. It did just come off of the stove. And so you can kind of see, and you can dip your items in here and you can start to see what color and you can decide if you want a little bit more of a darker tint or if you want a little bit more of a diluted or lighter tint. So I just added a little bit more because this pan is so big and I'm using so much water, definitely more than a half a cup of dye will work well for this. So this bath that I'm creating right here is going to be for this hanging piece and everything in here, including all of the little pieces can easily be dyed. So we'll put that in. I took off all of the price tags and I'm just kind of giving it a dunk. It will start to come back up and that's okay too. And I will eventually flip it over to make sure that I get more and more coverage. I can already tell too that this um, color is not quite as intense as I would like it. So I am gonna keep adding some more dye. I really like that dark, dark indigo color. So I'm adding some more. 
And it is kind of nice that you can play around with it and start getting the color that you want and really personalize it to what your needs are. So I think this is gonna get me a much nicer color. And it's okay if some of these pieces are on top of each other. I've done this dye bath before where even with them being on top of each other, they're still able to get saturated. So any kind of pine or any kind of um, plywood is definitely pretty porous and it's gonna be able to soak up that dye really well. If you have something like cherry or oak, the cherry or oak is gonna take a lot more dye to soak in there. So this is gonna be sitting during our class and I'm gonna go ahead and heat up some more water on my stove over here. And if you have any questions, let me take a second to answer any I have. So thanks for coming. And we are definitely using RIT dye here. And there's a couple of different kinds of the RIT dye, but we're using an all-purpose dye. And I definitely have my gloves on to keep that nice and safe. I'm gonna start another color of dye. I'm gonna go ahead and do a green dye into this pan. I think a smaller pan is all I'm gonna need for the green. So I have some hot water heating up on the stove. And I'm gonna get that about 140 degrees is what they recommend. So of course, while you're working with dye, don't let it get onto any of your surfaces. And as soon as it do does get onto any of your surfaces, make sure to rinse it right away so that it doesn't have any time to stain. Even if it's on your skin, if you can get it right away, you can get it back off. So if I'm making some marks in my kitchen sink as I'm going, I'll sometimes take my water and just rinse down my sink to make sure that I'm not leaving anything in there. So this is a cool piece right here. And there's plenty of room in this bath. So I'm gonna take some of these smaller pieces and I'm gonna dye some of these smaller pieces in here as well, just to see what these end up looking like. I've also seen people use um, popsicle sticks. So popsicle sticks can be used and then you can write a plant name on them and you can put them into a garden and you can see uh, just have some colorful little sticks that can hang out in plants, in gardens, and places to kind of designate what plant is what. And this is doing pretty well. Um, about 10 minutes is what you're going to want to leave it in for, but it can be longer. But I think once you hit 10 minutes, it's not going to saturate much more than it already is. So in the next bath, I'm going to be using some Truly Green. And I'm gonna use a smaller amount in this smaller bin. These are just those roast pans that you can grab anywhere at the dollar store at the grocery. And I'm gonna take some of this hot water and pour it into this new pan. And then I'm gonna take some dye and add it to this dye bath. So you do wanna shake these up, especially if they're brand new. Give it a good shake. There's usually a safety seal if you haven't used it once before already. And then the more you pour in, the darker it's gonna be. So I'm going for a really dark bath with this one. So I'm pouring a lot of this dye in here. And if I have any splashes of the dye, I do wanna make sure that I'm cleaning up as I go so that I'm not leaving any permanent marks. I'm gonna stir this up. So I usually have a couple of different things to stir with, maybe a spoon, a metal um, paint. I guess it's a paint palette knife. But you can see that really rich green color because I added a lot of the extra green dye. You can also see some of this green in my sink. So I'm making sure to rinse that away before it stains anything. And if it gets on your gloves or in your hands, it's usually good to get it off right away too so that you don't cross contaminate anything with your hands. So this is looking great. And I think that I'm going to dunk a mushroom in here. Oh my, look at that color. <laughs> so that extra bit of dye that I added in really has some power to it, giving us a really, really nice color green. 
And then I can also find some little pieces like these mushrooms or maybe a snail or two that are kind of like these wooden plywood gift tags. So this is a very strong dye bath. You can see how that color is really permeating. And I'm gonna rinse off my hands. And all of this is safe to go down to be flushed into septic and sewer systems. So it is safe for that. And what I'm doing is called an immersion technique where I'm letting them sit in there. But there's also another technique you can use with a brush. So if you want to brush the color on, you can do that. And that sometimes works for much bigger surfaces that you don't have a dye bath big enough for. So since this green is so outstanding, I feel like my other bath is kind of jealous and I might be adding some more indigo to that one. But before I do that, I'm gonna do one final bath and this is going to be the taller. I used this container once before. It's just something I recycled. And so uh, I noticed that the bottom leaked a little bit. So I'm protecting it with some extra foil at the bottom so that it doesn't leak. And this is what I'm going to do this birdhouse with. And I'm going to use a scarlet for that birdhouse. So I have some more hot water on my stove. And I'm going to try and put it in the same sink with the green one and see how we do. Felicia, how are we doing on questions? Any questions? We are doing wonderful. Okay. Well, we are having fun on a Friday then. Here we go. So I just added the hot water into here. And I think I need a little bit more because of the height of the birdhouse. So I'm going to add a little bit more, but leave some room for the dye to be added. I'm going to be adding about a half a cup of the scarlet. So I'm shaking it up. And I'll eyeball about a half a cup. You could be more precise if you want to. And again, if you don't want it this dark, you can go lower and add less dye to get more of a light, light red, maybe even a pink kind of tint to it or a rose tint. And then my birdhouse is ready to go in. So there it goes. And I'm just going to position it in here. I'm going <laughs> to use the center of the birdhouse to fill it up. I had this the other day with the red dye and it dripping around. And when I was taking a picture, it definitely looked like there was a scene going on in my kitchen because that red dye. So be careful to clean up all of that red dye. And you will want to flip these. So going back to my indigo bath, I want to add some more indigo because I just love how deep and dark those other ones are. So I think I'm going to add some more dye to this. I'm going to kind of put my pieces to the side so that I don't pour directly onto them. And I'm going to add some more indigo. And I'm going to stir that up. I really like this color that I have so far, but I would love it to be just a tad bit darker if possible. So we'll let this soak in with it a little bit darker, a little bit more dye. And you can, of course, take it out, let it dry for 24 hours, decide how you like it so far, and decide if you want to dip it again. And you can go for a second bath cleaning up my workspace so that I don't dye any of my kitchen. There we go. So we're doing good. I'm leaving this. I'm actually going to go ahead and take off my gloves and leave these for a while. And I'm going to move over towards the side of my um, kitchen counter. And I'm going to show you some of the embellishment part to do once we have these dried pieces. So I'm going to scoot everything over. I think I'm going to throw this butterfly in the indigo too. Why not? I think it wants to be in there. <laughs> cool. And we will come back and flip these and make sure that they're doing all right. But right before your eyes, you're going to see a really nice show with all these beautiful colors. So 
let me pull this camera back and you'll get to see some of the paint. There we go. So this is a bucket full of happiness for me. These are Posca marker pens, um, paint pens. They're amazing. They're very opaque, so they cover a lot of dark colors. Um, I'm also going to be using just some regular acrylic paint and a nice acrylic palette. So you can kind of pick and choose. I do want to protect my surface, so I have some paper towels here. And I'm going to start with the birdhouse. So the birdhouse that we're currently making, I took that out of the dye bath. And then I wait it probably about mm, a day and let it completely dry before I added any of these extra um, finishes to it. So keep that in mind. And then you probably wanna wait another day to let it dry before you try and do any kind of sealing process with it. And for a sealant, I love a kind of um, spray sealant, something like this Rust-Oleum Matte Clear It'll protect it from UV. It'll keep it from yellowing. Um, and it's usually a really good uh, spray to use. But you want to wait for the paint to dry for about 24 hours before you spray it so that you don't have any of your paint running. So I love with this one adding some white touches uh, similar to this one that I have finished over here. It kind of gives me a gingerbread feeling too. So I feel like we could use some brown writ dye when it comes to be Christmas time. And we could dip and dye some really cool gingerbread houses as well that are made out of wood. So I'm gonna use a white marker. And with these markers, you sometimes have to prime them. And because this wood was so good at soaking up the dye, it's also gonna be pretty good at soaking up the paint. So you're going to want to be careful with that. So I'm going to use this white and I'm just going to kind of lay down an outline of that. And maybe I want to accentuate the circle. And you can think about if you want to add any kind of other designs. Maybe just some dashes and some dots. Kind of like this. And you can keep going with the paint markers. And obviously the first time, Posca is great about being able to cover a really deep color um, very well. So I can keep layering up with my pens or I can switch over to the acrylic paints just to kind of get a darker or a more vibrant color. So if I have some of that, white and just kind of take it and go over the lines I have already with my paint pens. And that's already giving us a really fun, unique birdhouse. You can add initials, you can have team colors, team mascot. You could use a Cricut machine to cut out different vinyl pieces to make it look a certain way or to add different colors. But just with a little bit of acrylic paint and some patience, I'm able to come up with a really fun design. So the top of my birdhouse, I used some flat back rhinestones. And then I just used some glue that I had from my diamond dot. Um, there are lots of different glues, and I know Felicia can help you out with those too, that you can use to adhere. Lots of different glues for this surface, for a wood surface, that you can attach those pieces to. And I like how this is going so far. And you can add more colors than just the white. But I like kind of the minimalist so that the dye really shows off it's the work that it's doing on this birdhouse because it's a really very vibrant scarlet color. And I like, I like this so far. So I can kind of leave this to the side. I'm gonna go back to my dye bath and I'm just gonna double check. Um, I'm gonna flip everything over. So I'm gonna put my gloves back on so that I don't do, don't dye my hands. And I'm gonna flip those over. 
And then I'll show you another thing I do. What's fun about having these dye baths is once they're once they're settled, you might as well throw whatever you want to throw in there <laughs> to dye. So you have the bath, you might as well use it for as many different pieces as you would like to. So I'm going to flip over the birdhouse. And that is a really beautiful scarlet color. I'm kind of dunking it and letting the bubbles come up so that it can get, so it can sink a little bit. It's not going to perfectly sink. And then rinsing as I go so I don't leave any spots in my sink with the mushrooms and the pieces in here. Those are a really vibrant green. This green is outstanding. So I'm going to flip all of those over. Give my hands a good rinse. Make sure my spots in my sink still safe. Take a paper towel every once in a while, wipe it down just to keep everything nice and clean so that you don't have any unexpected surprises later. There we go. And then in my indigo bath, I'm gonna flip all of this. Ooh, that color is really doing well. So I know you can't see this far over, but I'll definitely show you when it's time. Okay, so we have flipped everything and I'm rinsing, not leaving any marks, rinsing my gloves too. And then I can come back to the painting. So if you have any questions, let me know in the chat. Um, I did heat the water up. I let it boil and then I let it sit on the stove for a little bit to cool down. But about 140 degrees is kind of the minimum that you'd like for, um, for doing the dye. So I see someone in the chat said about the gingerbread houses and then added on fairy houses. And yes, please. I think that is a great idea. I can picture doing fairy houses very similar to this birdhouse and just really letting it fly with some extra rhinestones, some extra glitter, so you can get all of that. So the liquid dye, can you store the liquid dye for later? Absolutely. So the dye that I'm using today, I've been using for the past couple of weeks. And as long as you're not keeping it out in the sun or something like that, it should be fine for you to continue using. With this mushroom, I literally did a dip where I put it in the green for a certain amount of time, and then I flipped it over and put it in a red. So it's not perfect, but I can fix whatever's not perfect about it with a little bit more of um, some paint. So the dye water, I think, and Ashley, you can ask me another question if you need help with this, but the dye that's in the sink right now that's in these baths, it is safe to flush through septic and sewer systems. So it is safe for me to just go ahead and put it into the sink down the drain when I'm finished with it. Um, but before I finish with it, after I take the wooden pieces out, I love just throwing some extra fabric in there too and just really taking advantage of the dye bath that I already have going on and um, adding some extra fun to that. So I'm gonna go to this mushroom and I'm gonna do a little bit of painting on this one too, just for fun. So I'm gonna take some yellow and I'm gonna make some yellow spots. And it's a really nice, nice dark dye. So it might take a little bit more acrylic paint to cover it because it's so rich. So this is like that classic dot that hangs off the end of your mushroom. This mushroom would grow great into a little fairy garden with a little gnome sitting next to it. And so you might even let a layer of this dry before you keep adding more so that you can get a good cover. You can make it really funky and psychedelic. So I did one where I continued to make circles and circles and circles to make it kind of funky. Or you can do kind of a classic white dot, little gnome outside <laughs> by your tree kind of thing too. So either acrylic paints or pasta markers would work excellent for this. And it's just kind of wherever you want it to be. And you could add some gemstones to this as well. So I could let this paint dry and then I could put some pops of yellow gems over top to really make it sparkle or even just glitter, nothing wrong with a little bit of glitter. 
in the right space. <laughs> there we go. So later, um, either at the end of this month or at the beginning of next month, I do have a tie-dye class coming. So if you um, have some more questions about how to dye with fabrics, that's when we can focus on that. But today's focus was really focusing on dyeing these wood pieces. And this writ dye does a great job of dyeing those wooden pieces. So I'm going to keep working on these. I'm going to let some of them dry, and I'm going to keep layering them up. And I would love for you to go to um, 4M Coleman, which is my personal Instagram. And you can kind of see some of my finished products on there and you can check out. I would also love if anyone decides to make any themselves to see what you're working on. So if you want to share those with me, either at 4M Coleman or at Learn with Michaels, so I can see what you're up to and how your process went. So here are my dye baths one more time. And I'm gonna be taking the green and red out. Ooh. And I'm gonna be placing them into a different roasting pan. So what's nice about this too, is that these ridges kind of let some of that dye seep if it needs to seep or drip a little bit. So it's kind of raising things up to still give it room to drip dry. You can also think about lining the bottom with some paper towels so that when the dye comes down onto the pan, it's gonna be absorbed into the paper towels. And what I like about these roast pans is that they're all pretty um, reusable and very convenient so that you don't mess up any of your normal kitchen things with the dye. So I'm gonna pull out the birdhouse first from our dye bath. And I am very happy with this color. It looks amazing. So this will dry. I'm going to let it dry for about 24 hours. It'll probably be completely dry before that. But just to be safe, I'm going to give it a good 24 hours. I'm going to grab the mushroom next. That looks amazing too. Really like how that's turning out. And then some of these little pieces are really cute. I got a snail. I got some mushrooms. And these are just wooden plywood tags that Michaels has for all the different seasons. So you'll see some come out at Christmas, you'll see some come out at Halloween, at Easter, and lots of different shapes to go with all of that. And then I'm going to take out my blue piece and I'm going to put it into a different pan. So the indigo piece Here's the butterfly. I really like how this one's turning out. It's looking really nice. And then if I wanted to go back with my markers, I could add some extra touches to that. And then this piece, I'm gonna pull it up and put it into this pan. Give it some time to dry. And once it's drying for a bit, I will move it around to make sure that it's getting a good even dry. But for now, I'm gonna keep it in the pan like this to get the initial drips. I have some of those popsicle sticks that you can throw into planters. You can write the names of different herbs on them. You can throw them in the garden. And here are a couple more pieces that can start drying in here too. So I'll have these drying. I might even put them out on my back porch. But since we have these lovely dye baths, I don't love just letting them go to waste. So I am gonna do one more thing with them. I happen to have a canvas bag. And so I'm gonna take this canvas bag and create kind of like a tie dye with it. So what color should I do? <laughs> so if you're still with me live, if you tell me which one of the colors do you wanna see this, that's already got kind of a greenish tint. Do you want it to go darker green? Do you want me to add some red pop? Do you want me to add some indigo pop? I see a red so far, who else says what? Any other ideas what you want? So I'm taking the bag and I'm getting it wet. I see a couple more reds, so red it is. And I'm getting the bag wet and then I'm gonna do a little traditional tie dye where I'm going to kind of um, fold it and I'm gonna do some rubber bands. 
So the rubber bands are gonna keep the spots green and the tightness of folding the fabric over could potentially keep some of those places green too. And I have another bag that I started before the class. So we can end this class today with a bag reveal and see what that dye bath does to the bag afterwards. So if you're interested in this part with the fabric, um, we do have a tie-dye class coming up that uses more of the Tulip um, brand dyes, but it would work with Rit dye as well. So if you buy dye for this class, you can keep it and do some of the tie-dyeing in the future that we do also. So I'm doing some rubber bands to give it a couple of extra elements. And then I'm going to put it into the red bath for a certain amount of time. We'll see how quickly the red dye takes to the bag. And then what I like to do with my tie dye is put it into a large um, Ziploc bag and then take the bag and put it outside for about a day, preferably in the sun if you have sun where you are, and see what you can do with that and then take it out and do a cold water rinse with it to get any extra dye out and leave it in the sun one more day. So here are those rubber bands. I'm gonna put it into this red dye. I'm gonna get my Ziploc bag ready. One of the other dye colors I had today was called graphite, which is like this nice gray color right here. So that's, that's a color that I used for that particular bag. I'm gonna flip it over so that both parts get red. And we're not gonna see the final reveal of this one that I have in the dye bath right now. So that's why I kind of gave you another one that hopefully it will work out and hopefully we'll have a really nice piece to show you. But tie dye sometimes can surprise you. So you just never know what you're gonna get. So this looks like a good, I like this color. That was a good choice. Thank you for voting on that. And I like what it's doing. I'm getting some of the dye into my sink, so I know it's about time for me to be done <laughs> before I destroy anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and seal this up and I will throw this onto my back porch for the sun to kind of shine through and grab. And because I'm done with my bath, it's okay if I get some water into them and dilute them because I am finished with those. So I was going over that um, bag with water to make sure there wasn't any dye on it. And then, like I said before, right, writ dye is okay to go down your sink. So you can use some extra water and just be really careful with it um, as you're going. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna save this tin for another time, but I am gonna make sure that I'm getting all of the wet dye off my, sink so that I have it everything clean and then I'm ready for one last reveal before we leave today. So here we go. Make sure I get my green so I don't stain anything. Okay. So I'm going to remove some of these rubber bands and see what we got with this one. So this is the graphite and the bag to begin with was a little bit peach or pink. Ooh, yes. So I got a little bit of the um, rays of sunshine kind of coming out. I had twisted the bottom of this to give it more of like a spiral coming from this corner down here. So when I hang this out in the sun, you'll be able to see that really fun design too. I'm just using that extra dye bath to get me one more project and something that I was interested in dyeing. So that is it for today. We somehow made it through this kitchen experience together. So we are able to use the writ dye in order to dye all the wood. And I just really appreciate you all coming and joining me. And thank you so much for coming. We hope to see you again. I have classes on Thursdays and Fridays that you're always welcome to join me online. And who knows what we might make next. So I'll see you soon. Bye.